yeah so welcome back this is called Lithica, where we bring you exciting tutorials and also we demo projects okay so in this very tutorial series we'll be focusing on building a comprehensive client support system so let's take a closer look at the three main sections that we will cover throughout this journey okay so the first one will be the user authentication and also the dashboard and the second section also look at the staff and the customer management and then the third session we are going to consider the ticket management system okay uh, that is the ticket se uh, section all right but in this tutorial in particular we are just going to focus on the user authentication where we look at the login code also look at the logout where we have a section expiry then we look at the dashboard so that is it or that will be it so that waste too much time let's get straight up okay so um you can go to this github link to clone the project or download the project i'll leave this link in the description so just go there then you get a link okay now before you start we have to also install zamp that is if you don't have zamp you have to download it and install zamp after installing the zamp um you get this zamp then ht docs you have to download the project zip it and uh, unzip it and bring it to the ht docs okay so now i've already opened the project my vs code because i'm using the uh, desktop github okay so this is a project so the first thing we look at is the the login code all right so before that let's just look at the system again so this is our login side this is our login side where it requires you to enter your email address and also your password and after that you sign in okay so let's look at the logic behind it so this is the code for the login we also have the index.php so the index.php is basically what we see here so we have the sign in the enter your email as i said earlier that is the index.php okay so here we've imported our that is the css files here then we have our customer support this is just basically the HTML side of it, where we know what we are trying to do. So we have the email, which has an ID, email, then also a name, email. We have a password ID called password, and also a name, password. All right, so that is it. When you scroll down, we also have our JavaScript code here. This is our JavaScript code. Okay, then we are also having some login form right now yeah so that is that is the login form here i'm not be using this basically right now so when you go to the login.php we have our code that is the php code behind whatever we are doing okay so first of all we send a request a server request method that we check if the request that is coming whenever we hit the login that is from the index.php when we hit the submit button we check if the request coming is a post if it's a post we set a variable say email equal to the post variable email this is the email that we get from the the input field yeah this is the uh, email variable we get from this input uh, input field name okay let me bring this one here and the password is also the email uh, the password variable we get when we hit the post okay so here we are going we are hashing our password using the md5 although this is this is not a best approach whenever you're hashing your password but for a tutorial sake i decided to go with this md5 since it's simple and easy to follow okay so after that we are coming to login now in our login table but before that let's go to our database to look at something here so in our database you can see we have um customers and also um, um staff okay so i grouped the staff into two rows that is the admin then the normal staff so you can see we have a user type that we are using to check if it is one if it's an admin if it is two it means the user is a staff but for customer we are automatically assigning three to a customer so basically whenever you create a customer we set the default uh, user type to three because we know that if it is three then it means the user is a customer okay so let's go so we select the first one so here i'm having a two queries one to query through the staff uh, table and also the other is to query from the customer table so here we are querying through the staff table we check where email is equal to the post email that we are getting 
and also password to the post password that we are get, getting. So here we, sh we hash using the MD5 of the password that we've gotten. Then we select through the staff table to check if the email we've, we've entered in our input field, if the email we've entered in this input field and the password we've entered in this input field is equal to what is the one or is equal to the one we have in our DB. Okay. We select through the staff, the staff table, the email and the password. We check it with the one we enter in this field to see if it is equal. If it is equal, so we check. If it's not equal, that is if it's not the staff query we've gotten, then we return this equal, maybe a connection error or something. So we get an error here. Else we set the staff, we set, we set a variable called a staff count equal to the MySQL num rows. So we check, we set it to the rows that we've gotten. Here we check if it is empty. So we say if staff count is greater than zero, that means we have records in our table then we set a record row that is we create a, a record row we assign we assign it to the 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 data we fetch from the query okay so here i will talk about this lock and unlock later when we proceed or when in our maybe um subsequent videos because we are going to add a functionality where we can lock and unlock our screen so these are the we create a session variables to hold the ID, the user type, the email, first name, last name, in that order. And also we set our last activity to a time. Now what we are going to do with this la last activity is we'll be using this to be checking our uh, expiry, session expiry. Okay, so if it's uh, our session expires, then we do something. So this that's what we'll be doing with this last activity. Okay, here is where we are checking. So we say if the user type is equal to one, it means the person who has logged in is an admin. We store our department ID and also we echo successfully logged in. Then we direct the user to admin index.php. If the user is or the user type we are getting is two, it means a normal staff is the one logging in. So we direct the user to um, ticket list.php. Okay. Now, otherwise, we are getting invalid user. Okay, then this is our second query where we query to the customer's table. We also check with the email and password if we are getting a result. Then we do the same thing for the customer as well. Since we know that customer table, we only have one user type. There's no need to check if the user type is three or whatever. There's no need. We just have to redirect the user or since it's a customer, you direct the user to the ticket list as well. All right, so that is it basically for the login code. Let us know in the description. Maybe you didn't get something or you need more clarification on something, you let us know. Okay, now let's look at our logout code. So this is our logout. Now logout, we are just setting our sections and also we are destroying the session. Then we direct the user to the index.php. Now let's look at um, the session. I want to talk something small about the session. So let's look at the session.php. So inside the session.php, we are doing some small logic functionality here where we are checking our session expiry. Here I'm using five, so let me change to five. So here we are saying we start our session, then also we say if it's not session, that is the session we've gotten, it's not email or the email is empty, sorry, the login. So it's login is the ID, because when you look at the login, I've set it's login to the ID. So if it's login, it's empty, or it's not, or it's not around, we, it means the user hasn't logged in. So we direct the user back to the index.php. That is the login page. Also, after that, remember in our login, we created a last activity where I said we'll be using that one to be checking our session expiry. So we say last activity, a variable. We let it hold the section of last activity. Then now we set the session expiry to for testing purpose, I made it five minutes so that you can you can see how it works. So I've made I made a session expiry to five minutes. Then now we check if time that is minus last activity is greater than our session expiry. It means that we have to destroy our section because your section has expired. Then we take the user back to the login page for the user to log in again. So basically that is it. Okay. So now that we are done with our login. 
and also log out and sections let us go to the system and look at how it works okay so this is the system i'm going to log in as an admin admin email is cool c at gmail.com the password is just cool c like this so i will log in successfully logged in as admin okay so it will take me to the dashboard so basically this is the dashboard we have for now we are not done we are going to add more functionality to this to this thing but right now this is what we have since we said in this section we'll be looking at the admin the login the session expiry we are not going to do much of anything we are not going to talk about anything so now that we've logged in successfully we want to experience how the session expiry works so i will leave it like this then we go to the, the other side the row uh, the sidebar these things because they are part of the dashboard we are going to look at the the side bar what we are doing in the sidebar okay now we have a sidebar.php and inside the sidebar.php we are using some rules to check in for some stuff so here you can see here we have if the session row is equal to one the session row is basically the user type so if the user type is equal to one it means admin is the one that has logged in so we let I admin see the dashboard the users that is staff, the staff list, then the customer, the customer list, you get it. So it means that means that when a normal user like a staff or a customer logs in, they are not going to see the dashboard. Okay. But for your interest, if you want the, the users or customers to see it, you can let them see it. Or maybe if you want us to let them see, we can help you implement that. Okay, so that is it basically for this one. Also, we are checking here. So because we want um, uh, the department as well. So we don't want um, staff and customers to see the department. So we are checking for that one too as well. We are saying if the row is equal to one, we see the department. And here, since we want, uh, what do you call it? We want uh, customers, then the staff to see the ticket. So we are showing this ticket for the staff we want the staff to see only the ticket when we get there you will know what we are doing inside the ticket so for now we are not going to talk much about the ticket because that is not for this section okay we also have the support section where maybe you click on it it takes you to our youtube channel so for section uh, for the support section we are only checking for all we say if the row is equal to one or row is equal to two or row is equal to three let the user see this but so that is it that is it for this um uh, the sidebar that is it for this uh, sidebar we also have our header where we are storing all our uh, css uh, also some javascript yeah we have that one now before i forget let us look at the config where we should have talked about that one first so this our config we are using to we are using to set our database so this is our config where we are um, setting up our connection my sql connection using a local host the username is the root and then the db name is the customer underscore support so that is it for our config as i said the link to this project will be in the description you can just go clone or download it then follow along with whatever we are going to do so as we are waiting to test for the session, I don't know whether five minutes up, I didn't look at the time. You can just check. So um, let's click on the dashboard again. Okay, so five minutes now up. So look at it. So we have on inside the dashboard, we have so far, this feature hasn't been implemented yet. We are going to do it. We are going to implement this feature as well. So for now, you are seeing two staff because when you go to the table, inside the staff, we have two users. Yeah. Okay. We have no customers because we don't have any customer inside our customer table. When you go to the customer's table, you see we don't have any record. That's why you are showing and no. Department two, we don't have any department. So you say no department because there's no department record. No department has been added so far. Yeah, so for testing purpose, we cleared all the database because we want to demo everything from scratch. 
so that you guys can understand. Okay. Yes, it's the same to apply to the ticket. You don't have any ticket. Okay, so um, I didn't talk about this. In case maybe you clone the project, you want to know how you can um, import the database. What you can do is simple. Just click on the new. When you click on the new, you enter the name of the database. So after downloading the project, you see we have a folder called database. You open that folder and inside the folder, you see we have this name, my customer support. So you just go to here, then inside this field, you type the customer support. After that, you click create. So after clicking the create, you see that the customer support will be created like this, like what you see in customer support. Then you just import the database. So to import, you just click on choose file. Then you browse to where you have the project. So you browse to the project. Docs then client support, then inside the database, then you select the database. After selecting the database, you just hit go. Maybe it will depend on the version of the example you are using. You can see go or maybe any other thing, which I don't know. So that is after clicking go, it will be imported and you see this database here. Okay, so that is it. Now let's check if our session has expired. Let's click on this again. Okay, so your session has expired. Please log in again. Okay, let me just bring you out. You have to log in again. Okay. So, see, uh, sorry. Let's see, is the window password? Can you see? Okay. Login successfully. Okay. So, that is it. That is it basically for today's video and we continue with our staff that is the staff and customer management in our second section. Stay tuned and don't forget to continue watching Code Literature. Keep sharing, keep sharing.